Miss McFarland, I'm married. I thought you was dead. I have a son. Years before that, I rode in a gang. We robbed banks, trains, held people ransom. We killed people we didn't like. Bill Williamson was in that gang. <laughs> if I don't capture my former brother in arms, great harm will befall my family. Every story has an end. This is the story of John Marston's. John arrives in Blackwater with a job to do. Flanked by the FBI men, John is their means to an end. He must hunt down and kill his former gangmates, Bill Williamson, Javier Escuela, a gang which was led by the mercurial Dutch Vanderland. The year is 1910. The Wild West is on the verge of being tamed. Methods of communication form a spider web across the country, as do the train lines that connect every major town and city along the way. Motor cars are becoming a common sight. Government is centralized. No longer is this survival of the fittest. The West has been won, and the corporations have come to claim their prize. Apparently, Mr. Johns wants to run for governor which is why he's so concerned with cleaning up the state. There is no room for outlaws anymore. And Agent Ross has been enlisted to rid the West of bandits. He has forced John to help him by imprisoning his wife and son. John wants to leave the life of a bandit behind him. He now wants the quiet life. He doesn't want to kill anymore. But he will for them. I'm Jake. Your friends from Blackwater hired me to guide you. Promising his family he'd only be a few days, John wastes no time in heading to the last known whereabouts of Bill Williamson and his new gang. He finds them at Fort Mercer. Bill, I've come for you! You were as my brother. I've come to try to save you. Well, things are different now, John. Now I'm in charge! No more Dutch, and no more you. Not the start he hoped for. <laughs> clearly cannot do this alone, but in a place where friends are in short supply, one surfaces. Bonnie McFarland, Miss Bonnie McFarland. Rescues and nurses him back to health. What would you do now? Now I'm gonna take my time and go after him the less kind way. After helping Bonnie out on the ranch to repay her kindness, he heads back to Armadillo to quiz the local marshal, Lee Johnson, on Bill's whereabouts. In the free states, nothing is free, especially information. Marksmanship, horsemanship and tenacity are in short supply, so to earn help with his cause, John has to give help to theirs. The first being Marshall Johnson of Armadillo. I got the railway, the people who pay my salary, trying to get me to turn a blind eye to them burned down settlements up there. I got a bunch of cattle rustlers out near Box Canyon needs shutting down. Not forgetting the gang that keeps murdering homesteaders out in the back country. And I got a bunch of hoods over in the saloon, drunk, threatening to shoot up the whole town. Let's go deal with them hoods, then we'll discuss Williamson. Despite John's help, the marshal could not come through, but he did put him on to this guy. Nigel West Dickens, at your service. And because John helped him after... The scoundrels dropped me blind and left me to die! He came up with this plan. We will make them into Trojans. I don't rightly get you. Roughly translated means, with the help of Nigel's friend, Irish... It'll be my pleasure! They'll source a machine gun, mount it onto Nigel's cart, and use the help of Nigel's friend, Seth... A glass eye! to get into the fort to get to Bill. The friends John earns along the way gather outside the walls of Fort Mercer. This is the finale of the first act. Gentlemen, I bring you wisdom from the east. <laughs> Bill's gang is decimated, but no Bill. Mr. Marston, we got a live one. Bill's already run off to Mexico yesterday morning. He's gone to see Javier Escuela. The hunt continues. Welcome to Mexico, amigo! John transitions south of the border to Nuevo Pariso. Bill has taken refuge with another former friend and gang member of John's, Javier Escuela. In Nuevo Pariso, John encounters a very different landscape, but the underlying struggle is much the same. This whole place has been a hotbed for revolution since before the Spanish left. Now there's another local guy running around promising the peasants their freedom. Local government, foul bunch. Colonel Allende, he runs this place like a feudal king. He's an awful individual. The rebels want the land in the hands of the people. The government and its military want to bring them a more civilized world. Here too, 
greed, power and progress. Look to strip away what came before. My people have worked here for a hundred years. We brought civilization. Your politics are not my concern. John recognises the struggle. At one time he used to be an idealist himself. But these ideals no longer matter to him. All that matters is family. It's following ideals that led him to kill the Dutch. I tried to go straight. I left the gang after the gang left me. He now craves the peaceful life, but he can't get it until he finds and kills his former brothers in arms. A different land, but information arrives at the same currency. He plays both sides to try and get the info he needs. Perhaps you can uh, do me a favor. And they play him. John helps the army kill the rebels, and the rebels kill the army. Just be careful, John. Keep jumping from one side of the fence to the other. You might just get impaled on it. And he nearly does. Colonel Allende promises the location of Bill and Javier, but it's a trap. Sick of a man and loyal to the cause, they make to execute him, but is saved at the last minute by Reyes. He finally now has a side pick for him, and it is this side that eventually triumphs as John tracks down and kills Javier and Bill, and hands them over to the agents but his work is not over. Head to Blackwater. We have reason to believe that Dutch Vandalind is in the area. So it's goodbye to... Mexico! And hello, USA. Now the story continues in West Elizabeth, home to the major town, Blackwater. You can't erase your past, Mr. Marston, but we can. John's past is a sorry one. Born in a whorehouse, orphaned at eight years old, he became a runaway, doing what he needed to survive. He eventually fell in with Dutch. We were all bad kids, lost, angry and forgotten. He kind of saved us. Although John intends to kill Dutch, he speaks of him often with great fondness. He taught me how to read, taught me how to see all that was good in the world. He was a great man in a way. John's contention is that Dutch started in a good place. He wanted to help his fellow man. He was a man of great ideals. We robbed banks, stole from the rich, and we gave the money to people who needed it more. He saw that the system of power was rotten that good people had been crushed for too long. And he believed that change could only succeed if it was brutal and relentless. Make America what he felt it was supposed to be. In the end, he went insane. Lost faith in everything and everyone. Good intentions corrupted by power. Just like the governments that now look to control this wild land and the land south of the border, money, power and weapons all lead to corruption. This is the overwhelming theme here. We don't know if Dutch turned bad over time, or overnight. But for now, all we know is that Dutch has formed a new gang. And in the same way that he attracted the disaffected, young, idealistic minds of John and his friends all those years ago, he was doing the same thing now with the disaffected minds of young Native Americans. Another setback, but at least Dutch has been found. Just another fortress to infiltrate. Unable to infiltrate alone, John eventually catches up with Dutch during a bank heist. Oh, it's nice to see you, John. We all make mistakes, John. I never claimed to be a saint, but equally, I never took you for an errand boy. Just trying to help my family, Dutch. By making compromises, we all have to. Now let her go. It's over. You always were the romantic sort. We aren't thieves, John. We're fighting for something a bit like you, only we're fighting for an idea, not just for ourselves. Dutch was a good man once, a far better man than you. So what made him this way? I don't know. Bastards like you, seeing that things never change. John is hopeful that things can change. In fact, he's counting on it. With Dutch's fortress located, Agent Ross's bureau enlists the help of the US Army and John to go get him. Looks like it's me and you, John. With his gang once again disbanded, Dutch is finally cornered. We can't fight change when I'm gone. They'll just find another monster. With all trace of the gang eradicated, John returns to his family. His wife Abigail, another gang member, and Jack, the son that they had together, while still outlaws in the gang they left. I know I ain't been the best father, Jack. I made some bad choices. But all that life, it's over now. John realises that his soul is tarnished, and he's doing everything he can to leave the world in a better state than he found it. He sees his son as the best chance of that. 
Throughout the story in this game, indeed within its very title, we are invited to consider the theme of redemption. Can we atone for the wrongdoings of the past? Can we escape the consequences of our evil doings? Can we change? John arrives back to a tired looking ranch, hoping that these last few weeks in the service of the government has earned him his ticket to a quiet life. A life where he can nurture and protect the family he has made. Free from the violence, the death, the crime, and the evil that exists in all areas of society. The life we led, that doesn't go away. It's never over. You think those government men are just gonna leave us alone now? And after all John has been through, he'd be forgiven for thinking that he could. You know, you're real good with them tools. Thank you, Paul. You'll make this land real nice one day. Me and your mother, we'll do our part. By the time your turn comes, hell, this could be the nicest farm in the county. Take a look at that. Agent Ross returns and violates the agreement made with John. Corrupted by the power bestowed to him by the government, he is unable to let John be the last surviving member of Dutch's gang. John sends Abigail and Jack away to take refuge, while John faces the US Marshals and the US Army alone. By doing this, he secures the lives of his loved ones in the hope that they can live in the way he always wanted to, free of violence and in peace his final act of redemption. Abigail and Jack bury John. On his tombstone, there is inscribed, blessed are the peacemakers. That is what he tried his best to create, but his past and this power-fueled world would not let him. Three years later, Jack buries his mother. John left the gang for a safer, quieter life for his family to give Jack the best start they could. Some pasts, however, you can never escape from. They sometimes linger for generations. In killing John Marston, Agent Ross only succeeded in making another outlaw, another monster. Jack is his father's son. Now retired, Ross cannot escape his past either, and he cannot escape Jack's vengeance. Every story has an end, but it also has a beginning. Before Dutch's ideals became corrupted, before communication and transport became a way of life, before centralised government dictated a way to live, these lands were different and these men were different, a product of their time in a wild land at the turn of the 20th century. John joined a gang that were hopeful for a different world, a fair world. They had a code and they had morals. They intended to change the world for the better. What went wrong? Red Dead Redemption 2 will tell us. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. Make sure to subscribe to support the channel further and take a look at these other videos that may interest you. See you on the next one.